Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HDTV Test here. I'm here in London attending JVC's launch event for their new projectors for 2018. Now it's a rainy day in London today, but JVC's new projectors are shining brightly. And I would like to first of all go through the new features on their three projectors and then go through each model and see the step up in upgrades when you pay extra for the higher up model. So there are three new models that are launched by JVC. Those are the N5, the N7 and also the NX9 and in terms of the features the big story is that JVC has finally gone full true native 4K on their LAM based projector so I need to stress that the N5, the N7 and also the NX9 are all still LAM based whereas if you can remember maybe a couple of years ago the Japanese brand launched their Z1 which is also known as the RS4500 4K laser projector that had true native 4K DIA devices as well but that would set you back around £35,000 and these N5, N7 and NX9 will be much more affordable to the general consumers and so the big story clearly is that you know with LAM based projectors JVC has finally joined the true native 4K bandwagon and each of them is equipped with 0.69 inch new DILA 4K devices and there are several other features that are consistent across all three ranges those are the automatic HDR tone mapping function which I think is very important because of the limited light output of projectors especially in the home environment they generally struggle to produce convincing HDR presentation but what JVC has done is to read the metadata on Ultra HD Blu-rays beforehand and then decide on the tone map curve to be applied to the movie throughout the entire presentation so I will go into that a bit further later on but for now I just want to go through the basic features and then JVC also noting complaints from consumers and installers said that they have reduced the time it takes to HDMI handshake with other devices so you won't be left in the dark for much longer with the new N5, N7 and NX9 projectors. Oh, before I forget, these projectors are also known as the RS1000, RS2000 and RS3000 respectively in the USA. There are two HDMI ports, both of them are full fat HDMI 2.0B 18 gigabits per second with HDCP 2.2 compatibility. There's a low latency mode. I haven't managed to measure the input lag but hopefully it will be low enough to provide a responsive gaming experience to those of you who play reflex based games out there. And Let's start with the N5 then and I think uh, we'll start with the N5 and then I'll go up to the N7 and then go up to the NX9 to see what you get by paying extra. So the JVC DLA-N5 will retail for £6,500 in the UK and for that you get a uh, obviously true 4K projector and you get the automatic HDR tone mapping function and also you will get a new glass lens. Now this new glass lens is going to be the same as the one in the N7. It is going to be a all glass lens system with 15 groups and it will be 65 millimeters in diameter and the native contrast ratio of the N5 will be 40,000 to 1 but it also has a dynamic iris function and that will boost the dynamic contrast to around 400,000 to 1 and the rated lumens output of the N5 is going to be 1,800 lumens and the N5 will also come in two finishers you can have a choice of either a black chassis or a white chassis now let's move on to the N7 for the N7, the retail price is going to be £8,500, which means that you know you will have to pay £2,000 extra over the N5. And what you get in addition to the N5 is a slight increase in lumens output to 1,900 lumens. But more importantly, there is a color filter on the N7, which is not present on the N5, by the way. So this color filter will increase the DCI-P3 color gamut coverage from the 90% on the N5 to 100% on the N7. But take note that 
with this color filter in place just like on the Z1 or RS 4500 once you move this color filter into place to achieve a wider color gamut there will be some light loss and we've been informed again I need to test this thoroughly when you know if JVC ever sends me a review sample that the light loss will be around 25 to 30 percent which they say is less than the light loss that is caused by the color filter on the Z1 and this is because they have refined the filter and chosen a slightly different filter material for the N7 and also the NX9 right so for 2000 pounds extra you get more DCI-P3 color coverage up to 100% and also a slightly brighter picture 1900 lumens and also the native contrast doubles to 80,000 to 1 and with the help of dynamic iris system this will increase even further to 800,000 to 1 so that is the N7 and again I think the choice of the N5 and N7 for you guys uh, for the general consumers is not going to be easy i think on the one hand i don't think the dci p3 filter is that important because you know i always value light output and that is quite important to me for the hdr impact that is being provided by hdr material but i think doubling the native contrast means that you know the iris doesn't need to work as hard to try and get the blacks down so you may see less light pumping artifacts in movies right let's move up to the nx9 then and the nx9 will cost a whooping 18,600 pounds and the reason is because they have installed a 100 millimeter diameter glass lens 18 elements in 16 groups which is the same lens system that was found on the JVC Z1 or RS 4500 and when I reviewed the JVC Z1 I was thoroughly impressed because when you talk about you know any image when you talk about photography it's all in the glass you know the quality of the lens is of such importance to give the extra sharpness the extra sheen that you see from 4k material and the highest quality lens is going to be found on the nx9 and for that you will pay an extra handsome fee but in addition to the 18 element all glass lens system the nx9 will also have a higher native contrast of around 100,000 to 1 and with the help of dynamic iris technology it can be improved even further to 1 million to 1 so certainly as you go up the price points you get deeper blacks and more pop greater contrast from the presentation and also the lumens output goes up to 2200 as well which will be beneficial for larger screens now i think for us what we are most interested about is the automatic hdr tone mapping function on the new jvc projectors what it does is when you put in a disc an ultra hd blu-ray disc it will read the metadata specifically the max CLL and the max FALL. Now max CLL stands for maximum content light level and the uh, max FALL stands for maximum frame average light level. They will read these two metadata and then decide on the best tone curve to try and provide a good HDR picture and it worked extremely well from what I saw at this demonstration obviously this is only an engineering sample or oh, in case I actually didn't introduce this projector beside me this is the NX9 and it has another feature that I forgot to mention it has 8k e shift but we'll come to that later I'm talking about automatic tone mapping now so with the automatic tone mapping the projector will read the static metadata present on Ultra HD Blu-ray disc and then it will apply the best tone curve across the entire movie. We were shown a clip of Blade Runner which has a max CLL of maybe around 200 nits and max FALL of less than 100 nits. In the manual world, you have to go into the menu and adjust picture tone, adjust the dark and bright levels to try and boost the picture further. But with the automatic tone mapping function, the JVC NX9 automatically reads the static metadata on the disk itself and then 
boost the picture tone and also the bright level to 7 and 6 respectively for this particular disc. And it certainly presented a much more watchable, much more pleasant, much more impactful HDR experience. And there is another slider on the automatic tone mapping function called mapping level and from what JVC has told us basically when they design the automatic tone mapping the default max CLL and FALL is going to be 1000 nits and 400 nits for the image to be cast on a 120 inch screen so let's say if you have a larger screen and you need more light output you can increase the mapping level to brighten the picture even further although maybe at the expense of sacrificing some really bright specular highlight details but the option is there and conversely if you have a smaller screen you can lower the mapping level to get deeper blacks without needing to pump out so much light so that is another thoughtful feature that JVC has implemented on the automatic tone mapping function and as with most things, they have allowed us to switch off the automatic tone mapping function in which case you know, you're on your own, you can set the picture tone, you can set the dark and bright level respectively yourself you know, on a title per title basis. Having an automatic tone mapping function on the JVC N5, N7 and NX9 is a game changer, it's a real game changer because you just need to put in a disc and the projector will intelligently decide, at least based on the couple of demos I've seen today, on the best HDR presentation to brighten the picture and to lift the shadow detail and to make the specular highlight detail more visible. I think the JVC will sell extremely well because of this, because of this automatic tone mapping function and it certainly delivered based on what I saw today, the best HDR picture I've ever seen from any home cinema projectors to date. And the other thing that I want to actually mention is that the GVCs can't reach the peak brightness of let's say HDR televisions, but because the blacks are so inky, they are the inkiest, the deepest among all home cinema projectors, it actually gives a pop to all sorts of bright elements and certainly it felt much more HDR-like than the Sony and the Epson projectors because of this deeper black floor that gives a base or canvas for the contrast to pop. This is similar to OLED televisions, you know, they have true absolute blacks even though their peak brightness can reach as high as, let's say, the high needs full array local limbing LED LCDs, HDR images actually pop out of the screen because of this insane dynamic range and insane contrast that is provided by the very, very low black floor. And when I demoed it today, the dynamic arrays was not used because I think uh, JVC is still refining the algorithm to try and minimize the amount of light pumping and they didn't want to distract from the presentation today. But the blacks certainly looked very, very impressive. And the last feature that I need to mention on the JVC NX9 is the 8KE shift system. So if you remember, JVC pioneered this pixel shifting system called eShift, which initially on their older projectors shifted their 1080p DILA devices by maybe half a pixel or something diagonally to create the perception of a higher resolution and they've applied the same technology to the JVC NX9 but when they apply it to the 4K DILA devices then the eventual resolution became 8K and toggling on and off using the demo function, I can actually even see a difference on Ultra HD Blu-ray and maybe some of you will claim that this is just an enhancement, this is just processing, this is uh, for 8K, but it doesn't matter, the picture looks sharper and more detailed, especially in the Dark Knight, the UBS logo on top of the building just looks slightly sharper, even when I was actually sitting quite far away from the screen so it certainly has some impact at least the choice is there you know i wouldn't say that it is critical but it's good to have if you crave for the higher resolution especially if you sit closer to the screen now other things that i need to mention is that jvc has come up with a new remote controller as well which is much sleeker with flat buttons and with a light button here to backlit the remote certainly more in keeping with the class of the jvc projectors and i asked jvc about the brighton corners on their dla projectors and they 
suggested that unfortunately it is a fundamental design whose light leak will you know cause slightly over brightened corners but they are adamant that in real world movies this won't be distracting at all and that's certainly my sentiment from looking at the few demo clips and also from calibrating and reviewing many JVC projectors before I don't think that it is an issue but just to let you know that JVC said that this is a fundamental design problem that causes some light leakage. But this is Vincent Teo here reporting from London on the new JVC projectors and I think the N5, the N7 and the especially NX9, they all look extremely impressive. And I mean, obviously, if I win the lottery, I'll be going for the NX9 straight away. Oh, I forgot to mention that they are going to keep the X7900 uh, 4K e-shift projector that has a 1080p chipset and that will have a slightly lower retail price of around £5,000 and that is going to be the most affordable JVC projector that you can purchase from now on brand new. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Exactly. Exactly. Exactly.